I used to work as an um, actress, and I, I lived in Australia for eight years and I studied there. And the reason why I moved to the Philippines was to pursue a career, an acting career. And so I left, uh, and from that, uh, and for that four years I've been training and. and and uh, the first two years I was training, and then when I was uh, 17, I, I started to you know, have shows and everything. And just just recently, um, my mom uh, revert, became a revert uh, in Islam. And she had a few interviews how she didn't want my sisters and me to be in showbiz and that she wanted us to be good practicing Muslims. And so there was a lot of uh, controversies going around and everything. And my father told me to, to go home, to go back home, to be with my mom and to comfort her, comfort her. And so I went back home and subhanAllah I noticed such a big difference in my mother. I never saw growing up as a child. She had that beautiful glow in her face. And she was, you know, everything that came out from her mouth was beautiful. And it was like filled with Islam, everything. And she was offering her daily prayers. And um, uh, reading the Quran and, and um, watching Islamic lectures, <coughs> and she started wearing a hijab. <coughs> and uh, I wondered, is there a good cry? And so I went back home, and then I went back to work, and I felt like I didn't, I didn't feel well. And then I felt like I was doing something wrong. Because I felt this, I don't know, um, fear in Allah, taqwa, fear in Allah. And all I wanted to do is to please Him. And I felt like what I was doing was displeasing Him. And that my mother, you know, kind of woke me up. So I went up to my father and I said, Oh, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to leave everything I want to take everything for Islam because I want to be a good Muslim and I want to obey Allah and I want to uh, work for the hereafter. And he helped me, Alhamdulillah, I know I always made dua at night that may, may Allah make it easy for me. And, and he did. And after, after that, I started. Um, going to Islamic gatherings and going to the masjid to attend seminars to learn more and more and more about Islam. And after a few months, I also realized who were my real friends. And subhanAllah, they were my sisters in Islam. Because they love me for who I am and they love me for the sake of Allah. And that love will last until Jannah, inshallah. And no one, no, no one of my friends in show has ever contacted me. No one. And you know, when I did, when I fast, fasted in Ramadan, there were things. You know, it wasn't just. I realized a lot of things. It wasn't just refraining myself from refraining yourself from eating or, or drinking. It's also uh, disciplining yourself. And I found out a lot of things myself that I thought I could never do, but I did because of Ramadan. You know, it's also fasting to your tongue, to your eyes, to your everything. Because in Ramadan, you can talk bad, you have to train yourself from talking bad on people, and you have to. Uh, also, it's also cleansing your heart. You know, in Ramadan, you have to forgive everyone. Forgive
forgive everyone and ask for forgiveness for the people you have wronged. And mashallah, more and more, it's not to be more beautiful to me. And it became my passion. It became my passion. And the more happier I became and the more content I felt because of his love. Because you know this is verse that I really love. It's called it said it says in the Quran that Allah chooses chooses whom he guides. And that itself is a blessing because I know that I am one of the chosen ones. And I am lucky to be guided by Allah. And I told my Baba that I wanted to uh, perform Hajj. First, first, excuse me, you know, Una, I wanted to fulfill the fifth pillar of Islam. And I wanted to go close to Allah. And, you know, my sisters and his were saying, my friends, that my new friends were saying that, you know, when you, when you do Hajj, and if Allah accepts your Hajj, you will, you will come home like a newborn baby. And I wanted to feel that so that I could easily move on. And mashallah, you know, we called NCIF and they said that all the applications were closed. And it was so sad. And I mean, oh, ya Allah, if you think that his, his time for me, that is best for me to perform Hajj, Please, please make it easier. Please make it easier. And if not, the Allah will accept. And Alhamdulillah, the next day we got a call. And they said that they can open the application again for us. Allah Allah I was so happy. I was so happy. And the first time I saw the Prophet of Allah was Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I'm pinching myself, I'm not really here. And the same feeling when I first stepped in the Almost of Al Haram. And more and more, when I stepped in and I saw the Kaaba, MashaAllah, La ilaha illallah. I believe that Allah's presence. And five times a day, we pray in the direction of the Kaaba. <laughs> and I got some experience praying three steps away from it. <laughs> oh my God, so I forgot about the Kaaba. I just want to get out of there because I felt so close to my Creator. I felt so close to Allah. And my companions were saying, oh, Queen, we have to go, we have to go. But I didn't want to. I just wanted to. I've never felt so happy in my life. I've never felt so happy just knowing Allah and having Him close to me. And now, I think it's every every parent's dream for his or her child to finish her studies. Now I want to go back to university and study Inshallah, we come out of the business women at the same time study Islam, study Arabic, study the Quran, inshallah, and gain more knowledge. Because I want to become a college of Islam and be a good example for the sake of Allah. Inshallah.